A groundbreaking HIV vaccine which could use a two-part delivery system to train the immune system to produce a stronger response is being touted as a new hope. While still in pre-human trials, the science is promising. Swangala Chabalala of the Treatment Action campaign joins us now for more. Swangala, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, for speaking to us. Now, how close are we to seeing human trials of this vaccine in South Africa? Thank you, Hugo, and thank you for having me. Um, we, we are really excited with this breakthrough, and we are hoping that these trials will start soon. Uh, as you know, that uh, we are still having a high burden of HIV and mostly in South Af Southern African countries or in the global South. So with this breakthrough, uh, we are really excited and we are hoping to see human trials starting very soon so that uh, it will be easy for scientists to, 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 to prevent HIV from people, especially uh, at a younger age, so that we don't have a, we, do, we will have HIV generation in the near future. So, what, what challenges remain in developing an effective HIV vaccine? I mean, HIV has been around for, for many, many decades. Um, and I suppose there's some light to the end of the, the tunnel. But what's, what's prevented uh, coming up with a, an effective and accessible HIV vaccine? Uh, I, I think it's important for, for viewers to understand that HIV, it's not like any other viruses. HIV, it, in, it, it, when it enters your body, it, it comes into your uh, blood cells and it, it destroys your immune system. So it always uh, in a uh, disguise as your own, uh, as your own blood cells. So that is why it's really difficult for, for, for scientists to get a, a, a quicker vaccine like it happened in COVID, where it was just a virus, where the virus, <clears throat> it was easy to be detected and to be vaccinated because it doesn't attach itself to our blood cells. But with HIV, it's really difficult and they had to be very careful because if they do one mistake with our blood cells, it might cause another chronic disease that might be able to might not be able to be cured uh, as quickly as it is. That is why it took so long for HIV to get through these uh, kind of vaccines because it attaches itself to the immune system. So, and also mostly in your cells. Now we we know that uh, that is a it's a two part vaccine strategy that they've uh, that they've come up with. Just walk us through how this they intend for this vaccine to work? Uh, according to our information that we have now, this vaccine, this vaccine, it's one of those vaccines that are intended to be introduced, like HIV being introduced to your body. And uh, like when we are using, uh, I will make an example with uh, PCG. Mm. PCG, we know that we are given it at birth as, as, as children so that it can, it can uh, uh, assist us uh, to fight uh, TB. So that vaccine, it's made to work like that. So by the time, <clears throat> sorry, by the time uh, 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 HIV enters your body, then your antigens are able to identify it and are able to fight it. So in most cases, what people don't know is that when they are using these uh, preventable uh, vaccines, they're introducing the proteins of the same virus in your body so that by the time this virus comes into your body, your antigens can be able to fight it off. So with this dual uh, uh, vaccine, that's what they're trying to do to say, to prevent your 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 your, your blood cells <clears throat> from um, getting uh, 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 HIV, but also to assist your antigens to understand the, the 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 HIV virus as soon as it enters your body, and they'll be able to fight it off. So, so what is government and Sanic doing to accelerate the vaccine readiness? We are doing a lot. Uh, as as I will speak on behalf of civil society on this case, mm. uh, but uh, unfortunately, with government, there's less 
that we are seeing. Uh, we know that there are trials that are being uh, running around in terms of the vaccines that we are pushing. Uh, in terms of civil society, we are uh, continuing to advocate globally, but what also we are advocating for it, it's, it, it's a pricing because we understand that when these vaccines are developed and they are, they, there's a breakthrough, there is a human research that needs to happen. And in most cases, it happens in countries like ours in South Africa, where we have a high burden of HIV. But when there's the time for us to access them, then it takes more years for us to access them due to issues of uh, 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 patent loss, uh, 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 crisis. Like, for instance, for now, we are still uh, advocating for cap LA cannabis happen not of it, which is a, 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 an injection that will prevent people from getting HIV. But this vaccine is very, ex this, um, I'm sorry, this injectable is very expensive. It's about 500,000 per, 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 per injections. So as, as a person needs to get it twice, it means that a person needs to have a million rands to get that uh, a vaccine per year. So which is very very expensive. So for us, countries like us, where even if you, you are rich, it will be very difficult to buy that vaccine. You cannot afford a million a, a, a year. And also our government won't be able to buy for us. And the projections are showing that we'll get this injectable around 2035, 10 years from now. While the, the research was done in South Africa, while the, we, we, the, the 100% a, a, a breakthrough was found in South Africa, but because of the patents and the pharmaceutical Great, then we end up not getting these kinds of vaccines. You and as you will remember what happened during COVID, where also we were put in the last of the queue uh, because we are uh, lower middle income countries where we we are not our lives they didn't matter to others. The northern uh, 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 global north they always take this vaccine for their people and end up uh, leaving us with nothing because they can afford. So uh, there's a lot that needs to happen in terms of accessing these uh, uh, vaccines because there'll be a lot of advocacy, there'll be a lot of negotiations that needs to happen. Hence, also, we always uh, uh, talk to our government to say, you need to get involved, you need to lead, you need to be the one who are calling for these uh, 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 leaders to, 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 to not to not to, 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 to close gaps for us or close doors for us to access vaccine early. Spongela, how important is it for countries in the sub-Saharan Africa region to work together in coming up with their own vaccines? Because if you, if you look at the statistics, 67% of the global uh, incidence uh, of, of HIV is in sub-Saharan Africa. It's really important. And I think that's the language that our governments, they, uh, they don't get. And they, they are egos, they put their egos in front of uh, people's life. It's really important for the sub-Saharan Africa countries to work together because on the other side, we rotate around these countries. When there's a challenge in one of these countries, we move. The migration happens a lot. So we need one a, 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 a manufacturing a, a company that will assist us as uh, Africans, especially Southern Africans, so that we can be able to, to access a, a vaccine. That will assist us also to, to, to limit uh, the, the, the infection rate and also the rate cure, it should be, it should be high if we, we do get a, rate, a, 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 a cure in, in the near future, because we believe that we are not far from getting a cure if now we are getting some of these are kind of breakthroughs. And finally, wh why does Sub-Saharan Africa have such a high rate of, of HIV? It's, I mean, Africa is not the only uh, poor continent or grouping of countries that, that are poor. There are also other countries uh, on other continents. The challenge is how our government responds to these kind of issues. Uh, let's make a typical example what happened here in South Africa. Uh, we started to see the first HIV case around 1981, 1982. Mm. And it took us more than 20 years for us to start having ARVs and for doing research and all those things that uh, the former uh, president Peggy was calling for. Uh, it took us a long time. So if we, 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 we had dealt with this challenge in the 
early days. We don't believe that many people would, could have been infected with HIV. So in the sub-Saharan countries or in Africa, more leaders, they tend to take time to deal with these issues. And I think they are very submissive to, submissive to the global north in terms of advocating for their people. They don't push too hard for us to survive. So they always... Uh, 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 comfortable to pack and be donated. But if they can put their foot down and say, this is what our people need, there are trips, there are uh, a lot of, 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 of iterations that have been signed by these countries, which uh, uh, they're supposed to use them. But in terms of utilizing all those uh, declarations and, and, and laws, uh, they are not using them until it's too late. That is why we find ourselves in this situation. Sabangala, really good to speak to you. Sabangala Chabalala, Treatment Action Campaign Chairperson, speaking to us about a new dual vaccine that offers hope in the fight against HIV and calling on governments to do a little bit more.